So, today you join me in my garage, um, I wanted to talk about fixing disc brakes. If you've spent a ton of time around mountain bikes, or you go to mountain bike parks a lot, the sound of squealing disc brakes, or that feeling that you're pulling your brake as hard as you possibly can, but you just can't lock your wheel up, that's probably something that you're familiar with. My dad was really new to hydraulic disc brakes, he'd never even used disc brakes before in any capacity, um, and he'd just bought his, his giant mountain bike second hand, and I walked in on him, cleaning the disc rotors with WD-40, which if you know anything about this, you can probably imagine how that ended. The answer is is not well. Um, so today what I want to do is look at trying to get as much life back into these disc brakes without spending any money or without replacing any parts. I'm going to go through various different stages of cleaning both the rotor and the actual disc brake pads to see if we can get them back to functional. What I'll do is I'll jump over to the bike, show you quite how bad the situation is, and then we'll jump over and we'll get into the video and the process that we'll use to try and fix these pads. So as you can see, here we are with the bike. It's a pretty standard looking front end, nothing particularly high end, nothing particularly exciting, um, but I'll just roll the bike forwards and I'll let you listen to how badly it squeals and how much it just doesn't work. So this is me with the front brake completely locked up. Let's just move that pedal out of the way front brake completely locked up and if I push it forward I can move it with one hand it makes an incredibly pleasant noise um, just what you want so there's absolutely no no braking force in that whatsoever if I lock it completely oh no, I can't even lift the rear end of the bike up there's absolutely no force in there whatsoever so you can imagine if you're coming down a trail that's just not going to stop you, no matter how hard you try. So we'll jump over to the desk and I'll show you exactly what I'm going to use to try and resolve this as an issue. As you can see, we're here at the desk. These are all the things that you'll need, as you can see. There's not a ton of stuff. We'll go from left to right. So you'll need a set of Allen or Torx keys, um, depending on who built your bike and what sort of rotor bolts it has. Um, and, and depending on how the pads are released, you'll obviously need a different set of Allen keys. Um, these are just a sort of range. You'll then need methylated spirits. Um, this is what we'll actually douse the disc brake pads in, and we'll use this to clean the disc brake as well. You can actually use vinegar for exactly the same process. Um, I've not had as much luck with that, but it does work, supposedly. You also need a small bag, which you'll put the pads in. Um, I'll show you that in a moment. Have a smartphone or a computer standing by so you can look up the torque values of your disc brake rotors when you put them back on if you have a torque wrench and if you want to be particularly pedantic about it. And then finally, some sandpaper. I would suggest something upwards of 200 grit. I've got 240 here, um, which I've always found to be pretty effective. And that's everything. Um, beyond that, we'll jump into what we're actually going to do. So, as you can see, the pads are out. I've got them on the desk in front of me here. The first thing I'm going to do is obviously take a look at them. You can see they're completely glazed over. Actually, you may not be able to see that on the video, but I can see in person they're completely glazed over. They are about as contaminated as pads will go. So I'm going to unroll the sandpaper, and I'm just going to take the pad, and I'm just going to roll, sort of rub it in circles on the sandpaper like that, just to take the top layer off. I'm just looking to make sure that all of that sort of glazed over surface has disappeared. There we go, so that's looking nice and matte. I am going to do a little bit more. There we are, that's looking significantly better. So that's one, that's the other. Whilst you're doing this, it's always a good idea to not just wipe your fingers all over the surface of the brake pad, because you will actually just make the problem worse. So I'll do the second one. This one's actually significantly more glazed than the other one, which is quite interesting. There we go. Right, so, both pads are now fairly heavily sanded down. Um, there's no, no more of that glazing visible on there. So now that we've done the sanding section of this, the next step is to whack on some disposable gloves if you have them, just because methylated spirits isn't particularly kind to your skin um, if you manage to get it all over your skin. Then what you're going to want to do is grab your little bag, um, drop the pads in it. I tend to drop mine facing outwards, so back to back if you will, to undo the child safe methylated spirits. and. Fill, whoa, fill up the little bag a little bit. If you've got a Ziploc bag, obviously zip it up. Once you've filled the bag with methylated spirits, you want to basically just leave it to sit there. Probably going to want to do that for the next sort of 15, 
20 minutes probably. Um, just leave them there. Whilst you're doing that, you want to move on and start sorting out the disc rotor. So we'll jump over to that. Next step is to clean up the disc rotor. What I should have mentioned at the top of the video is um, that you're going to want a bit of general, just sort of disposable tissue. Um, I forgot to mention that because everyone has tissue. Um, so then you're going to want to douse this in the methylated spirit and start rubbing both the inside and the outside of the rotor. The rotor is probably not going to be the issue. You obviously want to make sure that it is clean but the rotor is not likely to be as much of an issue as the pads are. You can normally tell if there's oil on the rotor because it tends to go black um, as the oil sort of burns into the rotor. But this one, in all honesty, doesn't look too bad. And then finally, what I'm going to do is just take another bit of sandpaper to the surface. If the pads have glazed over, so will the rotor. I've had luck with it in the past, so I'll try it again. That's a so it's been about 15 minutes, give or take, um, and I'm going to pop the pads out. It goes without saying that you should probably be doing this in a pretty well ventilated area because methylated spirits is not brilliant when you breathe it in. There we go. So both pads are out of the methylated spirits. Um, I'm going to give the methylated spirits a minute just to dissolve. <clears throat> so here we are. Disc brake pads back on the wheel. I've given the bike a couple of heat cycles now, so I've, I've run it around our estate a few times. If you remember what it was like before, I could jam the front brake on um, completely and it wouldn't even pick the tail end of the bike up, as opposed to now, if I jam the front brake on, I can, I can one finger hold this and it will lift the tail up just fine. I can pull a stoppy on it. If I lock the brake and push against it, I can't move that with all of my incredibly dense weight against it. For all intents and purposes, that's that's as, as good as new. In fact, I can hear the rear brake squeaking a bit now. It's fantastic. The fact that you can pull a stoppy on it now, when before you couldn't even lift the rear end of the uh, rear end of the bike up um, under its own braking power. I'm pretty content with that. So fingers crossed it works for you as well. Um, obviously, drop me a comment below if you get stuck. But beyond that, I think we're all good to go. Thank you very much for watching and um, I will see you in the next one. Bye.